right here we go looks like that's live we're on the view let me make a few adjustments and then you will have my full attention nice all right well welcome welcome to my kitchen i am michelle fox culinary nutritionist and you already knew that because you're one of my friends <laughs> so thank you so much for being here uh mama i will warn you now is running on about two hours of sleep today so <laughs> if things feel a little groggy help me bring the energy comment in the comments i can tell you hot husband's over here and my beautiful sister is over here they will be in the comments helping me out we're trying this beautiful new technique today with the zooms we've got the zoom here and i've got a surprise for you in a minute once i start chopping and mixing and dicing and just gotta hang tight so thank you so much for being here we are going to be making two of my very favorite salad dressings today um, the main reason why I wanted to bring this to my community is because there are so many oils and things that we do not want in our body. So let's talk about the things we do want in our body. Um, I'll just give you a hip tip real quick. We're going to be working with avocado oil. If you're going to be blending and dicing and chopping with me, grab your avocado oil, grab your olive oil. Those are the two I'm going to be working with today. If you have any questions about any other oils, feel free to put it in the comments. And I'd ask Steve and Andrea to let me know uh, when the comments come in. And I am happy to answer because I want you to feel the best in your body. So tonight, let's do this. So the first up is the magical miso dressing. Um, Verona, I think you might have been at our fermented uh class so i don't know if you remember why we want the fermented veggies i'm giving you a, a hint as i do this and as i'm waiting and anybody even besides verona can answer why do we want to put fermented foods in our bodies again hinting here <laughs> and as i do that i'll let you know miso is one of the beautiful fermented foods that will support the Drum roll. Is anybody commenting over there? They're saying no. Okay, I'll help you. We want the fermented foods in our body to heal our guts, to support our gut health. Um, in Chinese medicine, and actually a lot of uh, a lot of medicine is paying attention now, but our guts are often looked at as our second brain. So if the gut's off, then the thinking's off. Um, I don't know if you notice that maybe if you're eating not so great, then maybe you're kind of feeling tired, the hormones are out of balance. Um, you just want more energy. So the more we can do to support and heal the gut, let's get it in. So we are gonna use miso paste in this first dressing. I can show you, I uh, poured out the tahini here. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the miso, this is a brand, it's just, it says miso easy. <laughs> There's hundreds, if not thousands of different types of miso. You can get it in a paste, you can get it powdered. I think there's even more of a liquid form. Um, so experiment. And this is one of the optional ingredients in our salad dressing tonight, but I am going to use it. I'm gonna put in about, about two tablespoons. I'm just going to eyeball it. And I'm using a high speed blender for this one, but I want to encourage you, if you don't have your blender, pull out your food processor or even like a hand shaker. I've got this hand shaker that I've often made salad dressing in before. And I like it because it has this little ball <laughs> in it. And so, you know, if it's been in the refrigerator for a while, you pull it out right before you want to eat it and you just shake it up and it's nice and the perfect form of liquid that you want. So there's that option. There's even an option of uh, just grabbing a bowl and whisking it, pull out your whisk and whisk this together. Um, let me take one step back. 
another reason why we are making these addressings tonight is because I want to empower you to get creative and have more fun in your kitchen. But in particular with the salad dressings, if you were to pull out, actually, how about this? That's something somebody can do that's watching. Go ahead, go to your fridge, just pull out a bottle of salad dressing that you may have bought from the store. And I want to see the top three ingredients, or even the top one ingredient. Is anybody willing to be brave enough to share an ingredient or two or three that's on their salad dressing bottle? I'm happy to wait for it. Because as I'm waiting, I will tell you, I would probably put money on it that there's probably nothing that you're gonna see here on this counter that's probably gonna be in that bottle. <laughs> And now a hot husband and Caesars are giggling over there. So what am I missing out on? I was going to walk over to the fridge and see. And see what I want to see what's in our dressing. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to if you want. <laughs> I'm sure my friends would love to see you. You're <laughs> very handsome today. He went into the office. So Whew, mama loves an executive man. All right. So does anybody want to share? And I promise I'm not going to ridicule you. This is just for an exercise to see. I'll give it two more seconds. I feel like that movie. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> and I'll take that as a no. Okay, absolutely no problem. Again, I empower you, I encourage you to read your labels, whether it's something that you have in your fridge now or especially when you're in the grocery store. Because I will say there are actually a lot of great brands that are paying more attention and they are putting in the organic and the whole foods into their salad dressing. So keep doing that. I'm sure most of my community already is doing that. Keep doing that. And of course, made from scratch, it's always going to be better because you're going to know exactly what's in the dressing. You're going to know how much you want, like maybe the store brand has a whole lemon and maybe you just want half a lemon. This way you're empowered to make the dressing exactly the way you like. All right, now Sister's giving me a look. And Tiara did tell, she did look in her refrigerator, Tiara. Tiara, okay, so Tiara, what did you find in your fridge? Let's Vegetable see. oil, sugar, and salt, unfortunately. Ah, Tiara, thank you. That leads me into exactly what I wanted to talk about. In fact, I just got goosebumps. So one, thank you so much for being here. It's awesome to have you here in my kitchen with me, with our community. Um, and two, that's exactly what I had a feeling you or somebody might say. Sugar, yeah, I, uh, it's the devil. <laughs> I was pausing, I'm like, no, I don't even want to censor myself anymore. It, it's the devil. Uh, going back to the uh, feeling that we're talking about with the gut, and why we want to put the fermented and gut healing foods in. Um, that's kind of the antithesis of the sugar because the sugar does break down our cell walls. Um, it's linked to a lot of horrible disease in our body. So if at all possible, you can avoid that hard chemicalized sugar. I just implore you to get it out of your system. Um, there's definitely a lot of alternatives. In fact, if you go to michellefox.com forward slash food, I've got a few articles about uh, healthy snacks that are sugar-free that you could have fun with and some sweeteners like dates and prunes that are fruit juice sweeteners that will give you that sweetness that you're looking for, but without all the additives and the chemicals and the icky stuff that sugar brings us. <laughs> so thank you so much for being brave enough to share. Um, I, hear, I see some head nods over here. Was that it? Oh, oh they're, they're, they're just heading. <laughs> <laughs> head nodding in agreement because they've heard me say this about a million times and hopefully since you all are in my community now you'll keep hearing me say it a million times because you know we all need reminders sometimes because I know you already know this all right now with that I get my dance in keep my energy up <laughs> uh, let's jump into the magical miso dressing um, if you want the ingredients if you haven't been there yet if you go to michellefox.com forward slash events I have both of the uh, ingredients listed so feel free to cook along with me just do it now you're here so do it but if not that's fine too you can sit back and take notes uh, but then I would just encourage you to put it on your calendar because sometimes I think these things just get away with us or get away from us but I want to show you that making our own condiments is so easy and 
you know, if I weren't talking so much, we would have already had probably two dressings. So <laughs> just know it's not going to take you this long when you do finally make your own salad dressing and store it. All right, our magical miso dressing. So I put in the miso paste. Again, that's optional for this particular salad dressing. It'll still be delicious without it, but we want that extra gut support. And what else? So I'm going to choose for this one. Let's go with the olive oil. Um, the healthy oils that are brain supportive, and I'm going to do for now, maybe like half a cup of olive oil for this one. I'm just going to eyeball it, but the brain supportive oils are going to be the olive oil, the avocado oil, ghee, full fat butter, and I know I'm forgetting one, um, I thought I could multitask. Yeah. I guess that is what uh, sleep deprivation does. Thank you, babe, because he didn't get much sleep either. <laughs> I think maybe if we put our two brains together, we're going to get through this show today. <laughs> so yes, thank you, babe. Coconut oil is the other one. And all those oils that I mentioned, they are going to bring in the nutrients, bring in the minerals to support our brains. If there's other oils in your house that I didn't mention, like canola oil, mm, get it out as canola oil is especially really horrible for the development of children's brains. So we don't want it in our kitchens. So with that said, we've got about a quarter cup of olive oil in this dressing. And now tahini. Can anybody tell me what tahini is made out of? I'm gonna smell it because I love the way it smells. I'm sure you've probably seen it on Mediterranean restaurant menus the tahini, um, but do you know what it's made from? And then you get bonus points if you can tell me why we want this particular food in our diet. And if you don't want to guess and you're just paying attention to what I'm doing, I put about two tablespoons of tahini in the dressing. Oh. Laura Watkins, Laura, hello, beautiful. Yes, you are one of my health sisters. So glad to see you here, have you here. So what did she say? Sesame. Sesame, yes, you get the bonus points. <laughs> so yes, tahini is made out of just ground sesame seeds. And sesame is filled with sesame, which is a mineral, a nutrient that's really great for our skin health and uh, I help. So anytime we can get that sesame in, this is the easiest way because I keep saying salad dressing, but this particular dressing that we're making, this magical miso dressing, I put it on everything. Um, one of my favorites is to put it over like a baked uh, sweet potato. I put in some like black beans and maybe some ground turkey and then some herbs. And then I pour this gorgeous dressing on top and oh, that's like a little bit of dessert for me. And there's no sugar in there. So yes, we got the sesame in there. Okay, what's next? We've got sesame oil. It comes in, I'm actually gonna use toasted sesame oil for a little thicker taste. And Steve has his hand up. Yes, sir. <laughs> and Andre's got her hand up. Yes, ma'am. Kiara says sesame seeds, good fat, protein, minerals. Yes. Good job. Amen, sister. Yes, to all the above. Yeah. Thank you. So the toasted sesame oil, you can get just regular uh, sesame oil or toasted. I like toasted because it gives a little bit more umami. Uh, that's more of like a, a thicker, yummier taste. So I'm going to put in about two tablespoons. Of course, I'm just eyeballing all of this because this is culinary nutrition, folks. I am not a chef. I like to say that up front because when you start seeing someone make cooking tech or chopping techniques, you'll be like, oh, yeah, she didn't go to school to be a chef. Correct. I went to school to be a nutritionist. <laughs> and so my goal is to get the good stuff in your body so that you are feeling better inside your body. Sometimes it looks beautiful. Sometimes it looks a mess. But if you're cooking with me, it's going to always be delicious. And it's always going to be good for you. So that was the toasted sesame oil. Now we've got the lemon. Woo so this one is a gimme. Let's see. Anybody I haven't heard from yet, tell me what vitamin is loaded in this lemon. It's something that I'm sure your mom or your grandma told you growing up, especially if you 
we're either getting a cold or trying to avoid a cold. What vitamin is in this gorgeous fruit food? <laughs> I'll give you a minute while I squeeze it into the dressing. Yep, they're all getting it. Okay, so let's see what I'm gonna hear. Sure. <laughs> what are they saying? Vitamin C. Oh, very good. My community is on it. Ooh, and that aroma. For those of you who are cooking with me right now, are you just getting that? This is honestly my very favorite aromatherapy in the world is the lemon and the zest of the lemon, the aroma of the lemon. I would say followed really closely by the smell of rain. Like who doesn't love the smell of fresh rain coming down? That's probably my second favorite smell, but whew, yum. And that, this lemon is a little thick. So I'm gonna cut it in quarters to see if we can get more juice out of this one. And I am gonna do a full lemon because I do like that, mm, that tart taste in mine. Um, if you're cooking along with me, you might wanna start with a half lemon now and then once we blend it, we're gonna actually taste it before we finalize it and put it in the bottle. So just put in, yeah, how about that? Put in half for now, we'll do a taste test. I already know I'm gonna love it, but I wanna make sure you love your salad dressing because if you don't love it, you're not gonna eat it. And I wanna get this nutrition in your body. So we're gonna make it to the point there that you love it <laughs> and that your body's loving it. All right, so I've got my full lemon in there. And next we've got garlic. So for most of my friends, I know you all are very busy professionals. And so I wanted to share, this is one of my kind of hip tips. A hot husband actually introduced me to this. It's uh, from Costco, his very favorite store <laughs> on earth. <laughs> Everybody in the family knows, all of our friends know Costco. That's Steve Scott. So, I don't love that it's in plastic and I don't love that it's already pre-made because fresh is always best, but I do love that it still holds tons of value, tons of nutrients. And when I'm running fast, which is most days, <laughs> I really am okay using that. So just a hip tip, there's plenty of other brands that have minced garlic already made, preferably you get it in a glass jar. Um, so there's that, but because we have time together and we're in our community, Let's go natural. Oh, natural. I've got some live garlic. So I'm going to put three garlic cloves in this dressing. If you are doing the handshake method for your salad dressing, you probably do want to go ahead and mince it all up. Since I'm blending mine, oh, I actually got four. Since I'm blending mine, I am just going to put the whole darn clove in there. And for my very beginners, this is an olive bulb. So that's the whole thing, it's called the bulb. And then the clove is the little pieces that come off. And again, I know my community, you already got this, but there are people that don't know this stuff. I didn't know this stuff a couple years ago, so no judgment here. I try to speak to everybody's level because again, I just, I'm so passionate about getting more nutrition in your body, regardless of where you are on the spectrum. All right, so I'm peeling these. And now I'm just gonna chop off the woody ends. Put that to the side. Do we have any other comments at the time or do we have any questions? Oh, Patricia just says she loves lemons. Ah, can you smell it on your side as well, Pat? I'm so happy you're here. I saw your note earlier and you followed through. It's so great to have you here. All right, so another trick with garlic to get that skin off a little bit faster. Once you kind of chop off that woody end, you're gonna lay it where it lays flat. You're gonna take your knife flat and you're just gonna go bam and the skin it just peels right off. Isn't that gorgeous? And then we're gonna put it in the dressing. All right, and these are a little bit older. It looks like the skin just popped right off on their own. So we've got four cloves in there. Next, we've got 
filtered water. I'm just gonna put in a little bit because I actually like my dressing a little bit thicker and I like it. I like to leave in some kind of chunks. In fact, I just love saying chunk, <laughs> but I love to leave in some chunks. So I'm just putting a little bit of water, but again, we're gonna taste test it in a bit. So that was probably three tablespoons water for now. And then we'll see what texture it is after we blend it all together. All right, and now, believe it or not, my very favorite part is adding the herbs. I encourage you to grab whatever you have in the fridge or whatever you really like when you go grocery shopping next time, uh, if you're just planning to make this in the future, um, or whatever you're growing in your backyard, that's even the best. Um, herbs are awesome detoxifiers. They cleanse our blood. They are antiviral. They keep that, you know, that monster away as much as possible. While I'm talking, I'm peeling off some parsley that I'm gonna put in my blender. Um, so yeah, just experiment. Tonight I'm doing parsley and I'm doing cilantro in my dressing. I think for this recipe, I think dill would actually be really good. Basil is awesome for you, an awesome antiviral, um, but I think the flavor might be a little too strong. I think it might overpower that kind of umami miso flavor that we're going for tonight. So that was the parsley. I did almost roughly like four tablespoons and I'm just kind of pinching off. And now I'm doing about four tablespoons of cilantro as well. And I am keeping the stems in there because again, we're blending this so we won't get, it won't be too chunky. There'll be even chunks, how about that? <laughs> All right. Even chunks are good. Even chunks. Seaster said, even chunks are good. <laughs> I don't think she likes chunks a lot. <laughs> I think she likes her uh, dressing smooth. And she is staying for dinner tonight, so mm -hmm. maybe I can reach a, a happy medium here. Yes. All right, she likes that. Okay, and then we're gonna add tamari, which is, uh, gluten-free soy sauce is one way to look at it. Um, typically it is sourced from soy beans and anytime you're working with soy, you want it to be organic if possible um, because soy is one of those that does have the zetoestrogens. And so when it gets into our bodies, it can kind of rework some of our hormones that just are not natural and not necessary. So if you're going to have soy in your life, please, 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 I implore you, get the organic type. If you're just using a drop or two, like these liquid aminos that I'm using, we'll be fine because <laughs> it adds the extra flavor. And, and that was probably two, tea, two teaspoons right there. So I'm using that as a salt alternative because that is going to give it that salty yumminess. One thing I just noticed <laughs> that I can't even blame on sleep deprivation because I put this recipe online, I think a couple of days ago, um, I forgot the avocado. I love me some avocado and it's definitely going in this dressing. It gives it an extra thickness, but more important, more nutrition because it's another one of our healthy fats that is so incredibly brain supportive. So I'm gonna put half an avocado in this recipe. But this is also a great example of, as you're making your salad dressings, get creative, like put in what you like. I want you to have the flavors and the nutrition that you like, because again, the more you like it, the higher chances are it's gonna get in your body. So, oh, wait, before I dig in, how dare I not give this avocado its props? Look how beautiful. I love when we've got like the perfect cut because you know, avocados can be a little moody. So we did good tonight, so yay. So put it in half avocado. And use my spatula from the tahini. And I am gonna put pepper. I know some people are allergic to pepper. So if you are, no problem. It'll still be delicious. Just leave it out. Nice cracked pepper. And now we're gonna blend. So if it gets a little loud, feel free to mute me. It won't hurt my feelings, <laughs> but hopefully. You'll love the sound because we're about to do the blender dance, of course. <laughs> Here we go. All right, 
right. So this is actually looking extra chunky. So we're gonna add more oil and more water before I even taste it. But I'm also gonna just kind of push down the side so we get all the nutrients in there as possible. Ooh wee, oh, that smells so good. Hope we can smell this through the screen. And why did I put the lid on when we need more liquid? Okay, so a little bit more filtered water. We want the water filtered because otherwise it is going to be filled with chemicals that we do not want in our body. Oh, look at that magic. Okay, so now you can see more of the chops and more of the blender. So that was the water. Let's put in the olive oil. A little bit more so this pours nicely over our dishes. And now it's back to the blender dance. Okay, the consistency is looking amazing. So now I'm going to grab a spoon and this is what the chefs do. If you guys weren't watching, I would totally just put my finger in there, but you're watching and the people that are eating the food are watching. So I'll do it the proper way. <laughs> Let's see. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this makes my heart melt. My sister just said, mm, so we'll ask her to come taste, test it. Uh, I was gonna say at the end, but she's coming oh, over now. No, so yes, no, so come okay. on over. Like, I, come I, on, you're I, like, I'm making this look too good. I'm gonna it. Looks <laughs> yeah, that is so good. So let me, I'm gonna drizzle. Community, this is Seaster. Hello. Seaster, this is Community. <laughs> We're just gonna drizzle a tiny bit for you to taste over a bed Ooh. of greens. Just doing arugula tonight, but like I said, this dressing is there. You go. This is um, you are welcome. This dressing is amazing over like a sweet potato. It's great. Oh, my favorite recipe is actually the my magical kale salad. I think you can find that on michellefox.com forward slash food. I love this dressing on that. Um, I put it on like at lunchtime, leftover chicken and veggies. That just adds an extra umami boost, which is delicious. So what do you think? Delicious. Oh, yeah, I got Truly. the delicious. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> All right. So then now for storage, thank you for trying it out. Here, you welcome. Enjoy the little snacky. And actually, while you're there, would you mind grabbing that red funnel that's right on the other side of the counter? Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. So we're going to pour the dressing in the bottle. And the reason why I wanted to use this bottle in particular is to show you that we in this house pretty much recycle, well, first of all, we do recycle all the glass. It's gotten to the point where I think Steve has cut me off. He said, I can't keep any more of the glass jars because you know our shelves started getting really full because you know every time we finish an olive jar or a pickle jar or, you know, what I'm pouring now, a salad dressing jar. I'm like, well, we gotta save it because you never know when we're gonna use it again. And so for tonight, it did come in handy. So I would encourage you to not become a hoarder. <laughs> Nobody needs to be a hoarder. And I don't think that's what he's implying at all. But I would encourage you to keep your glass so that you're not tempted to use any of the plastics that we all know have those, you know, estrogens and are just not great for food storage. So anytime you can store food in glass, let's do that. Okay, so we've got our gorgeous, magical miso dressing. And I think I have a lid. Okay, so I'm gonna put the lid on and just put this to the side for now. Karen wants 
like to know if they're invited to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Come on over. We're going to have plenty, as you can see. So, sure. <laughs> and Tierra, actually, if you are uh, cooking along with me and you want to come on screen and show us your magical creation, Andrea is definitely happy to share that link with you. You can hop on the Zoom with me. And that's for anybody else as well. If you're cooking and you want to share your creation, just let us know. And I would love to say hi on screen. Okay, I feel like we need some kind of intermission in between the two salad dressings because they are similar, but they're also very different. Um, this next one is my summer vinaigrette. And I call it that because it's so light and it comes back to, again, my beautiful bestie, aromatherapy, the lemon. Um, so this one we're going to do, whether you're on the website reading the ingredients or you just wanna do this with me, I'm gonna read through the ingredients now and then I think we're just gonna blend it up. I think you've heard me talking quite enough tonight. <laughs> so it's gonna be olive oil or avocado oil, it's gonna be a lemon, it's going to be a garlic, sea salt, pepper, herbs. So nice and simple, but again, the summer herbs is the best time to get in. I mean, year round, it's the best time to get the herbs in, but summer is when you can get the really fresh local greens from your farmer's market, which I always encourage people to support their local farmer's market. In fact, my teacher, when I was in culinary nutrition school, shared that as far as, I guess, rating best to worse, as far as purchasing your food, um, local is actually going to be healthier for you than the organic. But if you can get local and organic, even better. So we want to get local foods when we can, organic. And then, of course, a lot of us, especially the busy professionals, we've got to either go to the store or call Instacart or, if you don't know, call Instacart, dial up Instacart. Um, but hopefully you're getting those organic veggies in your body. All right, so for this one, since I did use the blender, and I do have another craft, but I think I am going to actually use the shaker. We can do a little bit more dancing with the shaker. <laughs> and this one, I'm going to try the avocado oil, because again, another brain supportive oil. Um, and what I love about avocado oil is you can heat it, um, if you can saute it, and it still keeps its form, unlike some other oils. Like I don't recommend using olive oil at too high heat because it does change form and then it's not so supportive for our brains. Avocado is very versatile and it has very little taste. Like anything you put in it or around it, that's the taste it's gonna take on. So we're gonna start with about half a cup. But you know what, we're being creative. I'm doing half and half. I'm gonna do a quarter cup avocado oil and a quarter cup olive oil because they're both so darn delicious. Little swivel there. So that's about a quarter cup avocado oil. This is a quarter cup olive oil. Anybody else want bonus points? Where do olives originate from? Tell me that. Riddle me that. Who knows where olives originate from? This time I am going to use my little hip tip secret minced garlic. I'm going to put in a big fat tablespoon of the minced garlic. Can anybody tell me where the olive originates from? And another lemon. I'm going to take it that you guys are just so busy cooking that you can't reach over and Google. You're on your laptop to tell me where the olives originate from. Yes, <laughs> I'll just turkey. <laughs> there you go. I would say that in the Middle East. So yes, they are a Middle Eastern fruit, um, which as we know, have amazing flavor profiles, but also so darn good for us and the healthy fat that they provide for our brains. So again, I'm squeezing in a quarter. And a what is the best olive oil to use in general? Cold pressed, organic, Verona wants to know. 
Yeah, thanks for asking, Brona. So organic first, always. And then the rest when they're saying like virgin or semi-virgin or half virgin, that's really the flavor profile. So I would say experiment. In fact, I know here in Denver, they've got an olive oil store downtown. I've yet to go in, but I'm always so curious. It's actually right by where I work in my day job. So I haven't made time, haven't had time, whatever. But I know they've got a ton of olive oils that you can experiment. Um, but you yourself, if you don't wanna go there, where is my toasted? You can just get like smaller olive oils and so you're not wasting too much money and just do a little taste test and see which flavor you like the best because they're all gonna be really great for your brain. So awesome question, thanks for asking. Okay, we've got the oils, the lemon, the garlic, and now the sea salt, which if you've been with me for any of these workshops, you know that I love the sea salt because the pH is very similar to the pH in our own bloodstream. So any of us that are having issues with hypertension or with um, any kind of blood issues, the sea salt is gonna be that much better for you. And as always, check with your doctor first. I'm not a doctor, I'm your nutritionist. All right, we've got the sea salt and I'm gonna add some pepper. And because this is gonna be a shaker and not a blender, I am actually gonna chop up the herbs this time. So we're gonna go a little bit more careful with them. And since I'm chopping them, I'm gonna take them off of the stem. I'm just gonna take these the gorgeous flowers of the parsley. Oh, smells so good. Don't you just love fresh cut anything, whether it's fresh cut flowers when you get those aroma, but fresh cut herbs are, ah, so magical. So I'm gonna make a little pile of parsley. I'm also gonna add the cilantro and, oh, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna put the cilantro on the side because one of our family members does not love cilantro and I want to get this nutrition in her body tonight as well. So we're just gonna chop up the parsley for ours, but I encourage you as many herbs that you have in your access, in your periphery, in your grab, grab them. <laughs> and again, remember I talked about my cutting skills, just look away. Just make sure you're getting small bitty pieces if you have any of those like uh, 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 the choppers, this is a great place to use the choppers for your uh, herbs or any like small food processors. And I'm again using my shaker, but feel free to make this one in your blender as well or your food processor. Or you can do it, uh, make it in a bowl and just whisk it all together. And I can tell you with the green herbs, this, uh, these recipes, they'll last in your fridge for up to, I would say three to four weeks. I can tell you they don't last that long in our house because like I said, I put it on everything. So they disappear usually in three to four days, but because of the antioxidant properties in the herbs and also actually in the olive oil, it lasts for way longer than you need it to last. So no worries about it not having the preservatives that some of the salad dressings have that are in the grocery store. So I think we've got it all down there. Yeah, Sister just said she didn't realize it lasted that long, so that's good. Yes, and now we get to pretend like we've got maracas. We have some uh, music somebody can pipe in for us. <laughs> you know me, I'll make up my own music. <laughs> but we're just gonna shake it till it's all mixed together. <laughs> this is the summer vinaigrette. Again, you can find the recipe at michellefox.com forward slash events. And while I'm shaking, oh my gosh, how could I not? <laughs> Remember this, this is actually a good thing to talk about while I'm shaking. Your girl, yeah, me, 
Uh, I just got accepted my panel idea at South by Southwest got accepted to be on their panel picker. And so I would be so honored if you would take like a minute, maybe even takes two minutes, I don't know, but to vote for me because to be on the stage at South by Southwest in Austin next March in 2022, it would be such an honor to share my message of building healthier communities with a larger audience. And I know because you are in my community, I know you believe in the health message as well. So would you mind doing me a favor? In fact, uh, hot husband, would you mind putting the link for people to go to to vote in the comments? Thank you so much. And then, oh, even better, because you are in my community, if you'd be willing to leave a comment after you vote on that same page, that might help push me over and let the judges know that the world is ready for this message. The world needs to know more about getting this healthy fat in to support our brains, getting the protein in. We didn't talk about that tonight because we're making dressings, but come back to my future workshops and we'll keep talking about that. And also the fiber. We've got plenty of fiber in both of these dressings to come through the herbs. So I would love the opportunity to share that message with a larger community. All right, so now it looks like we've got some lusciousness. Cesar, do you wanna do a taste test? Well, yes. All right, I'm gonna do my taste test actually over the, well, I can do it over the greens first to make sure I put in just enough of everything. And no, sorry, I'm not ready for you yet, Seasters. I think this needs a little more sea salt. Okay. I like the tanginess of the lemon and I'm getting that like, ooh, that little boost from the olive oil, but it just tasted a little flat. So I added maybe a half teaspoon more of sea salt in this one. And now I'm going back to my arm workout. <laughs> Shake it. Shake it. All right, that should do it. Now, I think I'm ready for you, little lady. All right. Just gonna do a little bit. And the reason I call this my summer vinaigrette is because when it is summertime, we tend to want less cooking because of the heat <laughs> and we want kind of that lighter food so you can see it's just a very light vinaigrette super easy to make if i wasn't talking this would have gone you know way faster oh i forgot we had the second camera see i'm learning here we go you can see it oh wait let's look at the lighting oh yeah <laughs> now it's shining <laughs> all right oh no we're getting you oh, fresh for it well, all right. yeah we've got we got to keep these uh flavors separate <laughs> You have to tell me what you think, because I mean, not everybody loves lemon and garlic, but let's see if you like this one. Okay, <laughs> I'm ready to try. Summer vinaigrette. Summer vinaigrette. Mmm. I actually do like, like it. it. It's a lighter taste. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you still taste some of the flavors? Of... Well, actually, I won't even put it in your mind. <laughs> tell me what flavors you taste. The main flavor I taste is like lemon. Okay. Yeah, it just tastes light. Mm. I, yeah, I can't, I can't differentiate, but it's good. Oh, yay. <laughs> Thank you. And so you are welcome. And so there we have it. So you can stay right here. Okay. We've got our magical miso dressing. We've got our summer vinaigrette. And this board is looking all kinds of crazy. So I'm going to take this one off the screen so you guys can see my beautiful sister a little bit better. Oh my goodness. There we go. Now it's just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I hope that this is helpful. If you end up making these dressings or you get creative and make something else, take a photo and post it and tag me so I can celebrate you because I want this nutrition in your body. I want you feeling empowered to have fun in your kitchen. And if you want more information, of course, go to michellefox.com. If you want to be a part of our community, sign up for our newsletter. I have a community newsletter. We send it out when we have um, big events and or sometimes I send uh, fresh recipes. And then sometimes I send really exciting news that I only share with my community first before I, you know, Kind of parse it out to social media. So I would love to have you as part of my community. Hot Husbands gave me the thumbs up, so hopefully that means it's in the comments now. So click the link, join our email list, and 
Oh, and another event tomorrow. I'll actually be with my friends at AARP making one of my very favorite dinners called unparmesan chicken over roasted red potatoes with a veggie melange. Mm -hmm. And you do not have to be over 50 to join us. And it's free for you, which is so generous of AARP. They're, they're taking care of my invoice, so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so I'd love to have you there. Um, that information is again on my events page. And am I missing anything? Anything you want to do? I don't think so. Yummy food. Right. That's all I know. <laughs> and then before I completely sign off, my love, are there any questions or comments that I should address? Um, Veronica, such a great session. Oh, yeah. Thanks so much for being here, Verona. You know I love, love, love your energy. Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. This was great coming in your community. Oh, thank you, Pat. So great to have you. Um, lots of emojis. Thanks, <laughs> so I got lots of emojis. I'll take the emojis. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been so much fun. Thank you all for this boost of energy. And I truly hope that this food nourishes and supports you and your family and your household. I am so happy to be here with you and have a beautiful evening. Oh, and thank you, sister. You're welcome. This thank you, hot husband. <laughs> <laughs> Gave me the nod and yay. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys on the other side. Have a great night.